8 VSB is the basis of free over-the-air television in the United States, bringing news and entertainment to viewers around the country. 8 VSB is the official modulation method for broadcasting digital television over the air in the United States. 8 VSB is a method of turning digital ones and zeros into an RF signal that can be transmitted and received and decoded back into the original digital bits. RF is inherently analog, so converting bits into RF is a kind of digital to analog conversion. Today, cell phones and various other devices also transmit digital signals via RF, but none of them sends such a wide bandwidth or over such a wide area as 8VSB was designed to do. This video tutorial will show you how a transport stream is converted into an efficient and robust RF signal capable of being amplified to well over 35,000 watts and transmitted over distances up to and sometimes beyond 50 miles to home receivers. 8 VSB uses amplitude modulation of the carrier to encode the digital information onto it. Eight distinct amplitude levels of the RF signal are generated by the 8 VSB exciter. The lower sideband is almost completely removed to save spectrum, thus Vestial sideband. The original carrier is suppressed and a very small pilot signal is inserted on its frequency. The input signal to any 8 VSB exciter is a digital transport stream. This can be either ASI or SMPTE 310 connected via a coax cable from either a microwave STL, fiber optic receiver, or directly from a station's encoder system. The transport stream is composed of bytes of data arranged into groups of 188 that form a packet. The first of these 188 bytes is a sync byte. This sync byte allows the exciter's input to synchronize itself with the incoming transport stream. Once synchronized, the data within the transport stream can be clocked in. Now the sync byte is not required and is removed, leaving 187 bytes of data per packet. The next step is to randomize the data within the remaining 187 bytes. This is required to ensure that repeating groups of bits do not form patterns that can lead to peaks or valleys within the generated RF spectrum. Part of the goal of 8VSB was to appear as a flat noise source to any legacy NTSC receiver. Groups of similar bit patterns would lead to RF energy being grouped into certain areas of the exciter's RF output band, creating an uneven spectrum that could cause visual artifacts in NTSC receivers. Once the incoming data has been randomized, forward error correction, or FEC, is applied, called Read Solomon. 20 additional bytes of data are added to each packet of data, putting the total at 207 bytes. These 20 extra bytes can correct for up to 10 missing or corrupted bytes of data within the packet. This brings the total number of bytes per packet up to 207. Next, the data is interleaved. This is another error prevention method as it mixes up bytes within a sequence of 52 packets or data segments, as they are now called. Without interleaving, a burst of noise could wipe out a series of data bytes exceeding the Reed solomon forward error correction limit of 10 bytes. The most common type of interference is a burst of noise, which can eliminate a sequence of bytes
That sequence of lost bites might exceed the 10 that the Reed Solomon Ford error correction is capable of correcting for, and data would be lost forever. Uncorrected data loss will lead to signal quality problems and picture impairment. By interleaving or mixing up the data bytes, it assures that any loss of data from a burst of noise will not eliminate a group of related bytes in any one segment. When the data stream is straightened out at the receiver, the lost bytes are spread out among several data segments. where the Reed Solomon forward error correction can correct for the missing data. As with the data randomizer, the interleave is performed using a mathematical formula that allows for its undoing at the receiver end. The next step in the 8VSB exciter is trellis coding. Trellis is another form of forward error correction. It looks at the entire data segment or packet. With trellis encoding, the 8-bit word is broken down into four 2-bit slices. Each 2-bit slice is compared to the 2 bits before it, and a 3-bit word is developed from the current 2 bits and the past 2 bits. This 3-bit word can help in decoding. This 3-bit word is now called a symbol. By containing information about the bits that came before, this 3-bit symbol assists in correctly decoding the 8VSB signal. Think of it as if you are tracing footprints in the sand. As they converge, it's hard to know which one is which until you look beyond where the footprints separate. If you know which print came before, it's easier to be sure of the next one. The symbols work in the same way. With three bits, there are eight possible bit patterns for every symbol. This means that eight different voltage levels can also represent any of the possible bit patterns, or symbols too. And this is the next step. The symbols are converted into voltages. The voltages are represented on a scale that starts at negative 7 at the low end and go up to positive 7 at the high end in 2 volt steps. It is these 8 voltage steps that give 8 VSB its 8. With one symbol representing just 2 bits, of the original packet data, it requires four symbols to transmit one 8-bit word. From our original 188 bytes in the transport stream packet, we have removed the sync byte, leaving us with 187 bytes of data. Then, when we add the Reed Solomon forward error correction, another 20 bytes of data are added, giving us a total of 207 bytes. This works out to a total of 828 symbols for every data segment. In order to decode the information within the 8VSB signal, the receiver must synchronize itself with the incoming symbols. To accomplish this, a regularly repeating sync signal is added at the head of every data segment. Segment sync uses four symbols and only uses levels plus five and minus five. This distinguishes it from the other symbols. With its regular appearance at the start of every segment, it is the only repeating sequence within the random symbols of the 8VSB signal. With segment sync adding four symbols at the start of every data segment, the total number of symbols increases to 832 for every data segment. This means that the segment sync repeats every 832 symbols, making it easier to be detected. 
FieldSync organizes the data segments into groups of 313, with the first sequence being composed of the FieldSync itself. Each segment is composed of four sync symbols, 748 transport stream symbols, and 80 FEC symbols, for a total of 832 symbols for each segment. Each field is composed of 312 data segments plus one field sync segment, for a total of 313 segments in each field. Every data frame contains two fields, with a total of 626 segments. FieldSync should not be confused with its similarly named counterpart in NTSC. 8VSB FieldSync bears no relation to the framing of the DTV picture elements. FieldSync has several functions. First, it contains within it a series of pseudo-random strings of symbols. These symbols are generated in a randomizer block within the exciter. A similar block is found inside every DTV receiver. With the receiver knowing what to expect from its random generator, it can use this data to adjust its equalizer to reduce multipath and noise interference, thus improving reception. These strings of symbols must be random, so as not to create a repeating pattern, causing a peak of energy in the RF output. FieldSync, as we have shown, is filled mainly with pseudo-random symbols used for training the equalizer in receivers. First, there is a group of 511 symbols, followed by three sets of 63 symbols. The middle group of 63 symbols is inverted every other field. This is done to identify field 1 from field 2. The second function of field sync is to provide a time for the randomizers in both the exciter and DTV receivers to reset to a known state. Field sync also carries information about the 8 VSB signal itself. The 24 symbols shown here identify this as either an 8 VSB signal or a 16 VSB signal. And next to that are 92 reserved symbols. And the last 12 symbols are a duplicate of the previous sequence's last 12 symbols. This is used to start up the trellis decoder in the receiver. During field sync, the symbols used for training the equalizer are limited to plus 5 to minus 5 levels. And during the 8 VSB information and reserved symbols, they too are limited to the plus 5 to minus 5 levels. In this case, though, the two states of the symbols act as bits, either being on or off. The last 12 symbols use the entire range of 8 levels. 8 VSB is an amplitude modulated RF signal. The 8 voltage levels are now used to modulate the amplitude of the RF output. 8 VSB suppresses its carrier, but to aid reception and locking onto the signal, a small amount of carrier, or pilot, is required. To do this, the 8 VSB voltage steps are offset by 1.25 volts. This offset creates the pilot in the 8 VSB signal. Once the RF is modulated by the symbol steps, it creates a double sideband RF signal. Using sharp tuned filters, both internal and external to the 8 VSB exciter, the lower sideband is almost entirely removed, leaving just a vestal of the original lower sideband. This is what it looks like after amplification and filtering. 